والأمر إن لم يكن النون محل فيه هو اسم نحو صه وحيهل والأمر إن لم يكن النون محل فيه هو اسم نحو صه وحيهل والأمر إن لم يكن النون محل فيه هو اسم نحو صه وحيهل الإعجاب والاشتراك وطلب التنبيه Liking, subscribing and requesting to be notified يساعد في الوصول إلى عدد أكبر من الناس شكرا جزيلا Helps in reaching a larger number of people Thank you very much We continue with the mark for the command form in Arabic. So here, wa and al-amr, the command. In, if, lam yaku, lam yaku was not. Yaku here is yakun, yakun. That's the original present tense verb, yakun. Because of this lam, it has an effect of it. It caused the last letter here this n to lose the short vowel so it should become lam yakun here but the way the arabs used to do it is if the vowel is in the middle of the present tense verb yakun like here this u they omit that vowel so it becomes lam yakun this n in addition the arabs used to drop this and to make it lighter for them so that's how they used to pronounce it so they drop the vowel as they do in other present tense verb in the middle when it the slam is used with it to negate it and then they drop this n to make it easier for them or lighter that's how it's described so this is the origin of this word lam yaku so and they leave this dhamma or u to indicate the omitted vowel there. So this lam yaku, that's the origin of it. It was not. Or if there is not, yakun is uh, to be in or uh, be. So if there is uh, not lam yakun, if, if there isn't a place for the noon, linnuni, for the noon, the letter an mahal a place mahal is a place so if there wasn't a place for the noon lin noni and you understand it's a command but there is it does not accept the an the emphasis an that we talked about in the last verse so fihi in it fihi fi is in he here refers to the command, the word you understood as a command. So, if there is no place for the an in this word that you understand to be a command, huwasmun, it is a noun. So, the grammarians, they use this emphasis an as a mark to designate the word as a command verb. So, if they cannot use the emphasis an because the Arabs did not use the emphasis an with that word and it's not behaving like a verb, it is a noun. So they call it a noun, even though it's used like a command. So you will come across words that are considered nouns in the definition of grammarians, but they are commands. This noun here, they call a verb noun to indicate that it's used as a verb but the grammarians consider it a noun nahu as or in the way of sah sah here is used to tell someone to be quiet or to stop talking so sah sah wa hayahal hayahal is a command to come towards the speaker another word for it is aqbal that's the one that's a verb, aqbil. So the Arab use these words, but the grammarians call these verb nouns, not verbs, because they're not behaving like verbs. Another frequently used word you will hear, whether in MSA or in uh, dialect, is ta'al, ta'ala, which means come. When you ask someone to come, you say 
come here you say ta'ala huna so this is also not considered by some as a verb and there is a dis disagreement about uh, some of these so this is what this verse is saying if the command has no place for the emphasis on the light one or the heavy one it's called a noun this is what the verse is saying now there are four ways to give a command in the arabic language and i've listed them over here they call it siga or the form for a command so the verb is use, using the siga the form for it and then it accepts the emphasis on so here they have the example idribanna asking someone to hit something so idrib hit that's a command you add the heavy an or emphasis an with the shed which is the strengthening mark for the letter so idribanna idribanna so that's an emphasis get out اخرج is a command to get out get out اخرج that's a verb so this is the siga or the form so one way to do it is you take the present tense verb and you drop the present tense letter then you add this connecting hamza to it at the beginning of it so اضربنا واخرجنا here I listed the ways you will see it in so here uktub uktub is a command to write so if you ask someone to write you say uktub notice i pronounce this uh, connecting hamza because i started with it i pronounced that a uh, a uh sound so i said o oh, uktub now another word ermi here this is, ends with a vowel so one of the ways the command is made you drop the vowel if it ends with a vowel so it becomes ermi you keep that sound of e there only it's not as an full e here and notice the way i pronounce the connecting hamza at the beginning of it which is used with forming the command in a three letter root and uh, more than four letter verbs they, they use the connecting hamza so e i said ermi and here i said oktub we will see some examples of why this happens with verbs now notice here when pronouns are added what happens to it na. this here is a pronoun for the second person feminine plural so here you have na. notice i silence this ba there so if it's a consonant you just say oktub or na here if you're talking to a group of women now we talked about dropping the vowel at the end if the word the verb ends with it over here here you have the five verbs they end with the pro three pronouns the second person plural masculine the second person singular feminine with the e here the second person uh, dual feminine or masculine so notice what happens to the verb at the end of it this ba here uktubu because the vowel the pronoun after it is an u uktubi because the vowel after it is an e uktuba ba notice this ba that's how the movement is affected by the pronoun because it's a vowel pronoun now these usually in the present tense they are shown with the an to indicate their position with the command they're dropped that's why i put an x that's why i put an x on these ends so this way when you transform the derive the command from a present tense and it has these pronouns you have an example here of what happens to it here it's the emphasis on added so uktuban notice this is the light just with a no vowel sign or uktubanna so that's how you would hear it if you're listening to someone speaking in the fusha or msa dialect uktuban or uktubanna notice the difference between the movement this a on the ba here and this one here 
these are the distinguishing marks between them now this is called the siga or the form for command and this you will hear all the time there are other ways to make that command so the first one is this one here another example is this here is the present tense for he's uh, he listen uh, he hears or he is hearing something so yes ma'u all you do is drop the present tense letter then you use the connecting hamza e here in this case i say e e isma listen or hear isma so notice the changes there all the letters kept the same movement except the end one it's a consonant it got silent so isma another frequently used example is here yaqul so he says or he is saying yaqul so this is the present tense of it yaqul you drop the present tense letter and you end up with qul now because you will hear this a lot you notice what happened to it as i talked here about this present tense verb the way the arabs do do it with it if it has a vowel in the middle of it notice this letter here now uh, should go silent this is a consonant and that's what it did it's قل. now they dropped this vowel here because the command must take the jism or lose the movement at the end and that's how the way they used to do it with the vowel in the middle of a present tense when they transform it to a command so you will see this with uh, this type of verb so you have an example here the connecting hamza is not used with this قل. we will talk about this in a second so this is the first uh, form of a command how it looks with a vowel and without a vowel now if it's a four letter verb like here uh, akhbara is the past tense present tense yukhbar he is telling so if you ask someone to tell something you say akhbar so notice they just drop the present tense letter here and you replace it with the a now with the four letter root or four letter verb whether it's a root or it's a, a letter added to a three letter root so the verb is made up by four letters this a is always pronounced so you will always hear it whether it's within the sentence or you start with it unlike this a here in isma if i say i told him isma قلت له اسمع notice i said قلت له i i told him اسمع here so notice you do not hear that a uh sound when it's within a sentence قلت له اسمع you don't hear that a uh sound as when you start with it so that's the connecting hamza with the four letter verb it's always uh, heard so you will always see uh, hear a uh. Uh. so this is the first form the second form the way the arabs used to make the command is they just use the two form of a verb like here patience they just say it by itself and it's an understood as a command so sabran notice the nation it's a noun sabran so by saying sabran you are requesting patience so sabran so that's one way they used to uh, give a command a third way is by adding this l l which is called the command l so if you know the present tense of the verb you just add l to it and you just keep the present tense verb as it is so لتذهب, go تذهب, you go تذهب. you add this li لتذهب, it becomes a command go لتسمع. notice this isma here is a command to hear لتسمع is also a command here li so that's a third way of making a command now a fourth way is the arabs used to use words that indicate a command we will see an example of these 
in a second, but this is one example is Makanak. Makan is a place. Ka here means your, if it's with a noun. So it's you, Makanak is your place. But the way you use it, if, you, if it's used as a command, if you ask someone to stay, put where they are, you say Makanak, your place. And that will be as a command. So that's one of the ways the Arabs used to make a command by saying like, uh, words like this, Makanak. We will see examples in a second. This here, there's only 20 uh, examples of it in the Arabic language. Uh, some of them is like here, T. The, wa the word uh, you will hear is et, which means come, also means come, if you ask someone to come. But also this T, one letter, was used by the Arabs. T, which means come. Another one is J, cut, the word from the, the word uh, wija. They just use the letter J, cut. And F, from wafa, from wafa to fulfill a promise, you say F. Fulfill your promise. So these are very rare, but they exist in the language, and there are only 20. That's how what the Arabs used. So just be aware that they exist. As I said, this is the form that you will be you will see discussed in books, but these are different ways of doing it. Now, this book here, I will leave the the link for it in the description, Mabadi'u al-Arabiya fi sarfi wa nah I've used these page, pages, I will scroll through these pages, and they cover the command form and how it behaves. We'll see some examples. So this is the book, you will have the link for it in the description, inshallah. Now, here, this talks about the Hamza, the connecting Hamza that connects to the command. Notice it says, So if the, the present tense of a three-letter root verb has a, an O sound on the second letter of it, the, uh, the second letter of the root, that's when you say O to it. So this is what this text is saying. And if the verb is made up of more than four letters, it's E. And if the verb is made up of four letters, it's a. Let's look at some examples. You see, these are the verbs. These are the scales you use for the three-letter root. So the first three, they're the same in the past. Fa'ala, fa'ala, fa'ala. Notice the movements on these letters. These f, a'la match the the root letters of the verb you are looking at. And then you have the other three. Fa'ila, fa'ila, fa'ula. So in the present tense, notice how they change. This here is yaf'il, yaf'ul, yaf'al. This one here, yaf'ul, is the one you use the u with it. With the connecting hamza, u. So, uf'ul. Notice this here, method like nasara yansur. In the present tense, it becomes yansur. You drop the present tense letter, and you lose the short vowel at the end. It becomes unsur. You see, it's easier for them to pronounce it because of this. It becomes u, so it becomes unsur. Now, with four of these, it's e. If the second letter, this A here, does not that have that O, you say E. So, Fataha Yaftah, he opened. Yaftah, he is opening. Iftah. This is a connecting Hamza, you say Iftah. So, this is the first form of a command form, and that's why you, see, you hear it O or E. And that's the reason for it. Now here, we learn when to use the Hamza and when not to use it. The connected Hamza and the cut Hamza, which is pronounced all the time. So when it's, these are used and when they are not used. So you take the present tense verb and you drop 
the present tense letter. If the letter behind it or the first letter of the verb that remains is has a movement on it, a short vowel, then you do not add the hamza. This is not used. You just use it use what's left as a command. So notice here you karim, he honors that's the present tense verb. By dropping the present tense letter here is you, you end up with karim, honor. So of course you silence the last letter here. This here in the present tense it's U, but in the command it becomes M. So karim, karim. So that's the rule. If the letter after the present tense letter that remains is has a movement on it, then you do not use the hamza or the connecting hamza. Here is another example. يعلم. He teaches. So if this is dropped, the present tense letter, this is what's left. علم, and this becomes a silent mark here, the sukun. Oh. Notice here they use another verb, تعلم, learn. This here, يعلم, you can, this becomes علم, without this present tense, علم. Here, تعلم, يتعلم, he learns, يتعلم. By dropping, this here is ي, تعلم. So, يتعلم, you just drop the present tense letter and you're left with تعلم. So, تعلم, it's a command. So, يتعلم, this would be يتعلم in the present tense. To make it a command, you drop the present tense letter, so it becomes, and you give it the no movement sign. You end up with this, تعلم. So, now, if it's silent, the letter that remains, like in here, Notice, let's use this, احفظ, memorize. This is the present tense of it, يحفظ, يحفظ. So if I drop this present tense letter here, I'm left with a silent mo uh, mark on the letter. So this letter is not moving, this ha here, يح. Because of that, you use the connecting hamza, like this. Now, if the verb is formed by four letters, that's when you use the, ha the hamza of cutting or the cutting hamza. That means you pronounce it all the time in, within the sentence or at the beginning. Uh, and it's usually with a four letter verb. With the connecting hamza, again, if the silent letter, the letter that remains is silent, that's when you use the connecting hamza. So here, notice, احفظ. So they use the connecting hamza to help them pronounce the silent letter. That's what the job of the connecting hamza. And the cut hamza is same thing, only the difference is if it's a four letter verb, you pronounce it all the time. Now, for the four letter root, notice here, this is the past, dahraja, he rolled. يدحرجو, he is rolling. يدحرجو. You drop this present tense letter there. This is a four letter root of a verb. This is the present tense of it. Notice the changes. ر. In the past it's ر. دحرا. He يدحري. By dropping the present tense, that's what you left. This is your command. دحرج. And the reason you did this is because the letter remaining is moving. This دا here. Notice, you da, you da. This is moving, that's why you just uh, use the remainder as a command from the present tense, derived from the present tense. Now here are the scales of the that changes. Whenever you add letters to the original verb, you come up with different verbs. This is how they behave. So these are the scales. You just match the fa, the a, the la with the verb that you are using and you know that's the original. Now notice here these are the four letter verbs. These are formed after adding a letter to the origin. So here they added a hamza to form this new verb. With this one 
you use the cutting hamza this year afl notice i just dropped the present tense there and thus i came up with afl this is a for loop here they doubled the letter there fa'al fa'al notice this is a doubled letter here so that's a four letter verb and notice no hamza here fa'al that's the command from the present tense you fa'al fa'al here it's silent f so that's how the command is made now notice with these here the ones in green they all they're not using the hamza because the letter after the present tense letter is moving so that's it you just use what remains fa'al tafa'al engage tafa'al fa'al here you have more different forms with the different um, more letters added to the verb to get another form and here you have the hamza added the connecting hamza here so these are examples of a three letter root when it goes into changes you got here 10 forms and here is the four letter root it only has these forms same thing the same rule applies depending on the letter that remains after the present tense letter is dropped and here is Asma'ul Af'al. These are the verb now. So this lesson here in page 65 to 68, 165 to 168, it discusses the, na the nouns of verbs. So this is the subject we talk about. Uh, we talked about some of these are indicate the past and the present and a command. I'll skip forward to the ones that indicate a command. Here is the what we are talking about. بمعنى الأمر the words that are used as a command. You'll hear a lot of these, like إليك. إليك here is a lowering letter إليك to preposition to. كا is you, so to you. The way إليك is used, they use the word اعتزل, which means stay by yourself or stay away so i can say ilayka anni away from me or stay away from me so i can say atahaddathu ilayka i am talking to you ilayka to you or ilayka anni away from me amamaka in front of you it has a noun and a pronoun in front of you amamaka but it can be used as a request to go forward. Amamaka, go forward, taqaddam. So I can say the house that is in front of you, albaytu alladhi amamak, or I can say amamaka, move forward. Amin or amen in English, they translate it as istama', which means listen, but it's understood as answer as an answer our prayers and you have here other examples notice here sah this is the word we we saw in the verse which means uskut this is the word you will hear a lot uskut mean be silent or quiet عندaka walaka wadunaka wahaka wahaa now عندaka you will hear it is by you so if you want to say to tell someone to take something instead of you saying take it you say عندaka notice all these عندaka لديك دونك هاك هاء كلها بمعنى خذ all means خذ so this is the verb خذ which means take but here notice these except for the last one هاء are prepositions with the pronoun you and they all mean take خذ عندك is by you but also in Arabic it means you have so عندك كتاب you have a book that's how you understand عندك but within in context it means take it or take this depending on what you are talking about حيا أقبل come forward or come toward, towards me towards us whatever أقبل so وحيا 
then you have here the add more this is the word used in the verse وَحَيَّهَلَ وَحَيَّهَلًا So this, these are different usages they used in the Arabic language. Then in this page you have the more examples of this. Also the source or the masdar, the two form used the same way. So this is an example. These are examples of this command form that is considered a noun. As indicated by this verse. Well,